Hummy, hummy, hop, bitches. <laughs> Hello, my dears. Please excuse my appearance. I just woke up a little bit ago. I had a pretty long day yesterday. For those of you who saw my status that I posted yesterday on Facebook, I was invited to speak to in a um, graphic narrative class at LaGuardia Community College yesterday. I was invited by one of my um, old professors, Professor Bowman. She is amazing. She invited me to speak to her class about my experiences as an American mangaka and to talk about my challenges, to talk about just my experiences self-publishing and she was hoping that I'd be able to inspire her class. It seemed that a number of them one day would like to publish their own stories or they're working on their own comics and of course the whole point of a graphic narrative class in case you weren't um, too sure what kind of class that was, they um, the class actually teaches students how to narrate a story graphically through comics. So when I got there, um, oh, I'm sorry. So basically the whole point of this video is to tell you about my experience, talking about my experiences to her class. I thought it would be a lot nicer than just posting up a picture and you having to read a whole block of text because honestly yesterday was so incredible and so inspiring and will be an experience that will live in my heart forever. I will always think about yesterday or as long as I live whenever I need a little boost of energy or just a great reminder of why I love to do what I do. Anywho, let's just say I woke up really early to fix up some slides because I needed to have a good presentation. Worked really hard on these slides. I came in super pumped to share my story. Got there a little early so I got to talk to some of the students, a couple of which were um, former classmates of mine, so it was really nice to catch up on them. My professor almost didn't recognize me because when she last saw me, I had um, the sides of my head shaved and the back of my head shaved and just like this long quaff of curly purple hair. And here I was now with a blue mushroom cut. So it took her a moment to recognize who I was. And after that, she was super happy to see me. We hugged each other and so on and so forth. Um, some time later, um, after, after she had reviewed all the kids' um, work and such, it was time for me to present. I opened with a slideshow with um, my artwork paired with um, some music from Memoirs of a Geisha. Um, the song was um, um, The Chairman's Waltz. So just in case you're wondering what I was playing um, in my slideshow, I actually have that slideshow posted on the JU Comics channel on, on YouTube. Anyway. So I played that for the kids and they were just so, they were just so into it, they were just like, oh wow. My professor was just, just like really observing it. Um, and by the end of it, the kids were clapping and one kid was like, oh man, you got us, you got us, oh my gosh, like we're, oh my god, that was so awesome. And so then again, so then I went ahead and I introduced myself. I showed them slides about what, what manga is, what people think manga is, and how manga for um, an older audience looks like this. And so I, um, I showed work by um, Asumiko Nakamura, um, by um, Shinichi Sakamoto. I hope I'm pronouncing the names properly, so please excuse me if I'm not. And then I went into saying what an American mangaka was after explaining what mangaka meant, which is an author who creates manga. So then I went into talking about my struggles. I said right off the bat, um, even being called an American mangaka or being one who creates manga was one of the experiences, one of the struggles that I experienced when I first got started. I talked about how people didn't take me seriously at first, how they thought I was being pretentious and was trying to be Japanese by um, drawing manga and aspiring to be a manga author. 
I spoke about how self-publishing was a big struggle for me. The kids were really, really into it. Really receptive. It was like, oh, people are so stupid. Oh, we're not weeaboos. It was really great seeing how into it they were. And then I jumped into the victories, um, the good things that came out of, you know, um, going on this journey right off the bat, meeting my readers was the very first thing I talked about. Actually getting to see the awesome people who support my work and I showed a couple pictures of um, some of my, of my readers who visit me every year and they just were so into it. And then I showed cosplayers, which you know who you are, you know exactly how happy you made me when you cosplayed as my babies. So I shared a couple of those pictures at um, yesterday's presentation. The kids were so hyped to see these cosplays. They're just like, oh my god, that's the ultimate. That's the, oh my god, that's every author's dream. They were just so into it. And then I showed them um, a picture of when I met Sunny Strait. If you don't know who Sunny Strait is, he's amazing, incredibly talented, and is the voice actor um, behind my first husband, Krillin, from Dragon Ball Z. Yes. That is my husband in the enemy world. <laughs> so I told them about my story about when I first met Sunny Strait. And for those of you who don't know the story, this is how it goes. I was at Zenkai Khan and I was speaking to my, one of my readers. They had just purchased the third volume and they told me, oh, um, I just met Sunny Strait. And I was like, what? But yeah, Sunny Strait, the guy who made Krillin's voice, he's here. He's, he's here? Where is he? And I called my friends to like watch the booth. My reader also watched my booth. And I ran to go get Sunny Strait's um, autograph. I was on that line so excited. Like, oh my god, I'm going to be curling voice actor. It's so amazing. And then I felt someone's eyes just burning a hole in the side of my head. And I look over to my side and there's a, a girl in like half cosplay. She took her wig off and just staring at me like... And I looked at her and he smiled and I said, hello. And she kept staring and then she finally said, do you know this Beth Jimenez? Yeah. I'm like, oh my god. And I'm like, yeah, I'm Liz Beth Jimenez. And I'm like, oh my god, did you write Sacred? Yeah, I did. Oh my god, I just love your manga. Oh my god, when is Volume 3 gonna come out? And I heard talking to her about when Volume 3's pre-orders were gonna come up, which were gonna come out. And then finally, it was her turn to meet Sunny Stray. And Sunny overheard what she was saying and what we were talking about, and he's like, wait, what does she do? And then she turns to him and tells him, she made an incredible manga, it's so amazing. And then Sunny looks at me and says, wait, you, you make manga? I'm like, yes, yes I do. We're like, well, I want to see it, where is it? I'm like, oh my god. And so then he signs, he signs my little book, I'll show you a picture of his signature. In it, he wishes me good luck and he says, you better bring me a copy of your manga. And he was like, I'm serious, I want to see it. So I ran to my table and I came back with it. He, he told me he, that he would want it only if I signed it. So I made her to sign it and, and write a little message in it for him. And he, when he held my book, he looked at it and was like, you made this? You made this? I'm like, yeah, I drew it, I wrote it, I did everything. And he's like, this is incredible. I, I'm gonna read this. I'm like, ah, Krillin's, Krillin's gonna read my book. Oh my God. And so then, I told him, Sunny, you have no idea how much I love your work. It is because of you that I fell in love with Dragon Ball Z. You're so talented. You really brought Krillin to life. Without you, I would not have gotten into Dragon Ball Z, would not have gotten into anime and manga, and probably would never have met my would have had this dream of becoming a mangaka. And so I thanked him um, for everything that he did. And he just looked at me and was just like, wow. No one's ever told me that before. And I, and I told him, well, more people should. You're amazing. You're so talented. And I really, really appreciate everything that, that you've done for this industry. And he was just so grateful. And he was like, hey, do you want a picture? I'm like, of course they want a picture. And so we took pictures together. And he actually um, 
let me record him speaking in Krillin's voice. Do. <laughs> Kami hami ha, bitches! It's Krillin, out there inspiring the world of anime and manga artists everywhere. You wouldn't know it because I don't have a nose, but yet, I still inspire. Kami hami ha! Thank you so much! Bye. And so, after I told the students this story at my presentation, they were just floored. They were like, oh my god! And then I told them, and I met him again last year. Um, in August at PsychoCon and he came to my booth, I saw him, we met each other, we took pictures and he purchased the next volumes in my series and actually came back after reading it and asked me, asked me questions about my characters and he was like, I noticed that Skylar's bone structure is really long, is there a reason for that? And I was like, Yes, I actually talk about about my Demerians and Demon characters in Volume Three. Yeah, I have to get Volume Three. I, I need to find out. I need to find that out. And I just couldn't believe the greatness that is Sunny Straight. Thank you, Sunny. In case you just happen to see this, thank you so much for all of your love and support. Like you're amazing. And so when I told the kids this, I heard kids saying, "Oh my God, that, that's making it. Having having Krillin." read your story that's making it <laughs> and I told them oh I also show them pictures of fan art and the plushies and the pillows and all this good stuff that you guys have made for me oh my god the kids were so in love with it and I told them about my um, the first time I was um, invited as a guest author which was in, um, in Manga Next I showed them my the, the author bio that was posted on the website at the time um, it was just really amazing the kids were so just floored by it and were so excited and I gave them a lot of advice at the end I told them you know people are going to say horrible things to you they're going to put you down they're going to insult you they're going to call you names and make fun of you and just because you have a passion for something that they don't understand and I told them you just have to push that aside and just be your own cheerleader and inspire yourself and follow your dreams and keep working hard and understand it's going to take years but that doesn't mean you're not going to make it just because you know other people say negative things about you or you're like no one else has work like mine there's no place for my work in the world that doesn't mean there isn't a place in the world for your work everyone will find a niche for their work you just have to have the courage and the patience to look for your place in the world because there is a place for everybody as long as you're putting your all into your work there's a place for you and there will always be people to support your work especially when you have very pure intentions when sharing your work which is you're not doing it for the money or the fame you're doing it for the passion and i told the kids this and they were just so excited and at the end of my presentation i um, showed them um my booth at this year's zenkai con and told them you know this is what's going on now people are still kind and supportive i've gone from selling 25 to over 300 books and just telling them about you know um just my situation now as an author and they were just so excited and so humbled by it all and at the end I asked them if they had questions they had tons of questions questions from oh how do you work with comic markers to what's your favorite Dragon Ball Z saga which I answered I answered everything and not only did I get questions like that someone drew me fan art of me with Krillin I thought it was the most amazing thing in the whole world. <laughs> it was just so cute. And the class also um, signed a thank you card with little messages for me. And oh my god, thank you so much guys. Thank you made this such a wonderful experience for me. I was only supposed to be there for about an hour. I ended up being there for about three hours plus, almost four hours, because I stood behind um, looking at people's portfolios and sketchbooks, hearing their stories and giving them advice depending on what their personal struggles were and what their personal insecurities were. I really wanted to give everybody um, the best of me. I really wanted them to come out of there and with a sense of excitement for what their futures were going to be. Uh, so that was so great and just, my teacher was so excited and so um, so just so supportive 
I remember when I was even saying like, oh, Krillin's my my first like husband, he's my cartoon husband. She, my professor, my, my, my old professor turned around to her class and said, you know, my sister's first husband was Darth Vader. I think she likes the power. You know, she's that kind of professor. And as I was giving advice, she would turn to her class and tell them, maybe now you'll listen. I've been telling them this exact same thing, so thank you for telling them this, Elizabeth, because they're not listening to me, you know? And um, it was just really great. It was just such an amazing experience. And my professor was telling them, like, look, I wanted her to speak to you guys because she's not too, um, you know, you're not too far from her um, in age and she came to this school and now you're in this school. So I, you know, her coming here and showing you her success, now you can see that, you know, you can gain that same success. I could have invited a 40 year old um, author and the dream would seem so far, but having someone so close in your age telling you about her success, now you can see it's something within reach. And I thought it was a really cool thing to tell them. And I went into my emails and I already had all these great thank you emails. Oh my god, they were just so incredible. Let me read a couple to you. Okay, here's a couple of the emails that I received as soon as I got home from the presentation. The first one says, I really, I'm really inspired after your presentation in Ms. Bowman's class. I always felt like maybe people may not like my work, but now I am more willing to take a chance with my stuff, looking at what you have been through. And the next email came from a girl who moved to New York from China to follow her dream of becoming a mangaka. She wrote, I'm so excited that you shared your own story about pursuing your dream of becoming a mangaka. Thank you so much because your story gave me a lot of strength. Since I came here three years ago, I could not find more western people who like Japanese manga like me. And I found this style is not so popular here because western people use another way of drawing manga. I'm so excited that I met you. I like your manga style so much. I'm so excited, especially since you're such a nice person. Aww. Just like all the female narrators in manga, cute, nice hearted, helpful, and hard working. Oh my gosh, that's so sweet. I thought it was just so, so, so sweet. And I also received another fan art. And of course, it's Krillin! <laughs> so, that was my experience yesterday presenting to a college level graphic narrative class. Um, it was an amazing experience. I hope to have more opportunities like that in the future. And I hope that you enjoyed watching my little vlog here. So sorry again about my appearance. Hopefully you understand I was very sleepy. But I really, really wanted to share this with you guys. And I thought it was a lot more fun than just me posting up pictures with humongous blocks of text. So hopefully you agree with me. So please leave comments. Um, please tell me what you thought about um, the video. Tell me what you enjoyed about um, what I told you happened at the presentation. So curious to know what you think. And um, yeah, that's it. So take care, God bless, and do not be afraid to follow your dreams, guys.